Hi guys, it's the evening on, um, I believe it's April 15th. At this point, I'm losing track of time. We're a few weeks into, I am kind of quarantined here in New Jersey um, for the coronavirus. Um, lately, you know, a lot of uncertainty for all of us, a lot of just misinformation, a lot of just of confusion. And for those of us here in the tri-state area, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, it's been a lot of fear, um, a lot of people getting sick and unfortunately a lot of deaths. And it's been a time where a lot of us have lost our jobs, part-time jobs, full-time jobs. We're unsure what's going to happen and I'm one of those people as well. I'm lucky enough to still have my adjunct job at the college where I teach sustainability. You know, grateful for the ability to be able to get a PhD, but at the same time, my yoga teaching, my Pilates teaching, my bar teaching and meditation teaching basically have ceased. And unless I'm doing YouTube videos or also grateful to be doing some work for Club Pilates online. Um, I don't know what the future brings and it does bring a lot of uncertainty for me despite the training, despite meditation, despite the time I've spent on the mat and in, in the ashram and doing this work, I am a type A and I have to put food on the table and take care of my mom. I'm ever grateful for my boyfriend who, you know, keeps a roof over my head and takes care of me and, you know, financially is, you know, capable and willing and kind enough to do that. But I'm very independent and I don't like to have to rely on others, um, although I accept it graciously. Um, but I think it's important for us to spend some time going inward, you know, maybe feeling that vulnerability, feeling like we can nurture ourselves. Uh, a lot of time we judge ourselves and we, we tend to push ourselves to go beyond what's, cap what's possible. And I, I include myself in that, feeling a lot of frustration, feeling a lot of discomfort, um, but I'm grateful. And so I'm trying to remember that. And I had been thinking maybe I'll do a little bit of an evening practice, very gentle, don't know what I'm gonna do with it, but more of a nurturing practice, more of a relaxing practice, and kind of more of a practice to ease us into sleep. So I'm gonna go ahead and come to the mat and I am in my jammy bottoms, so it is what it is, right? being open, being vulnerable. I'm gonna go ahead and sit down on the block and go ahead and um, allow your shoulders to drop, with your legs crossed, just rest your hands on your lap. Take a few moments, close your eyes and find your center. And start to notice your breath. So it's really easy when we get frustrated and when life starts to get to us for us to forget that we're alive right, that we have this breath, that that's consistent, that's steady. So I'd like you guys to really focus on that right now. Big, deep inhalations that expand the abdomen, rib cage, and chest. And complete exhalations that draw the chest, rib cage, and abdomen inward. Relax the tension from your eyebrows, jaws, shoulders and hands. Allow your seat to root, whether it's on the block or on the mat. And allow your spine to lengthen. Press your outer thighs down and find your breath. Make sure there's a space between the lower, upper and lower teeth so you're not grinding or clenching your teeth. And rest your tongue in the lower jaw. Just let it relax. And take a moment to exhale and drop the chin towards your chest and take your fingertips and find your occipital ridge, the bony protrusion here, place your thumbs underneath it and the rest of the fingers just above and gently draw the chin down. And then a stretch in the back of the neck, drop the shoulders as you do this and open your elbows out slightly. Relax the face, I can feel my face clenching up. Good, and gently pressing your hands into that lower part of the occipital ridge. Inhale, bring your head back to center. Exhale, release the arms, palms up on your lap. And as you next inhale, bring the chin up towards the ceiling and feel a stretch in the front of the neck. Relax your jaws. Breathe. And try to avoid letting the head collapse back onto the upper back. If anything, draw the chin slightly forward. Good, then exhale, bring your chin back to center. 
And on the next exhalation, let's draw that right ear toward the right shoulder. So I'm just mirroring you here. I'll try to remember to work on the same side that you're on so my left becomes my right. Feel the stretch along the left side of your neck. Root both sits bones down. There's going to be a tendency to kind of shift away from the direction that you're, um, that you're stretching. Then inhale, carefully bring your head to center. And then exhale, drop the left ear toward the left shoulder. So I'm feeling a little bit of tension here, especially in the back of the neck. I know it's probably because I'm not sleeping well on my pillows and just kind of clenching and grind and kind of feeling tight and tense. And then inhale, bring your head to center. And exhale, just let your shoulders drop. Let the breath drop and sink it into the ground. Then inhale, feel the belly, rib cage, and chest expand once again. And as you exhale, let the breath sink, let the belly empty, let the breath drop. One more time, let this inhale fill up, belly, rib cage, and chest. And then exhale, let the breath drop. And we're going to gently blink the eyes open. And I'd like you to switch the cross of the legs. So spending a lot of time seated today, right? And I'm, again, just doing what I kind of my body feels compelled to do. Relax your shoulders, lift your chest. And if this is uncomfortable for you, you know, use a block. I'm up on a block myself. Lift your chest. Maybe straighten your legs out and widen them. Kind of notice the track of my thighs, right? They're not hugging in. They're actually expanding out. So you could think if this is too much on your back, just straighten your legs out, right? Nice and wide. So relax the shoulders. So we'll have tension in the face and shoulders. So I want you to take a little bit, as silly as it seems, and just squish your face like you just sucked on a lemon. And then exhale, relax it. And again, squinch your face. And exhale, relax. And one more time, squinch your face. And exhale, relax. Good, then we're going to hike our shoulders up. Just lift them up really high like they're earrings. And then exhale, just drop them heavily. Inhale, hike up. Exhale, drop. One more time. Inhale, hike up. And exhale, drop. Good. Well, let's go ahead and just roll the shoulders back and relax tension. So from here, I'd like you to go ahead and scooch forward a little bit, hinge at the hips, and remove your block if you're on the block. And just set it aside. We're going to go ahead and root the seat, elongate the spine, drop the shoulders, and let's bring the fingertips to the mat. Lengthen the spine. I'm going to kind of shift a little bit left and right here. Just move around, release some tension. And try to feel whatever sensations this creates in you. And not just feeling physical sensations, whatever emotional stuff arises. Just kind of moving with the breeze, right? Moving with nature, going with natural movement of the body. Good. Because even yoga can become very linear, right? Everything in life is just one straight line. In our society, you know, we know that things are circular and often repetitive and patterned and cyclical. And let's come back to center and exhale, hinge at the hips. And let's turn the palms up as we rest our forearms, elbows on the ground. And I'm going to walk my elbows underneath my shoulders, root my seat, and lengthen my spine. So can I touch the ground? Can I bring my forehead down? Yes. Do I need to? No. Um, does it say anything about me right now? So. In a type A world, yeah, well, you know, you can go all the way down to the ground. Why aren't you? You're being lazy because this feels good. And because I'm going to back off and I want to focus on lengthening my spine. So I want you guys to root your seat, draw your tailbone back, lift your chest up slightly, draw the shoulders back, pull the belly in, and sway. That's all I want you to do. It doesn't have to be the deepest pose. Just be present in what you're feeling. It's the night. You're getting ready to go to bed. Hopefully, maybe, get some sleep. You want to agitate the body. Good. Then we're going to slowly sway as we start to bring the spine back up. Let's relax the shoulders. Excuse me. Inhale, elongate, and twists are really great for the back. So have us twist today to the left first. So the right arm to the outside of the left thigh. Bring the left arm behind you. And notice that I'm trying to keep my ears over my shoulders and my shoulders over my hips. So I'd like you to inhale, elongate the spine, and exhale, twist. 
And again, inhale, elongate. Exhale, rotate. And maybe that hand sneaks a little bit closer to that left hip. Maybe right and doesn't, doesn't have to. And maybe that left hand walks a little bit more to the right. Enjoy the twist. And then inhale, return your spine to center and just pause. Feel the difference. Feel that unwinding of the spine, just kind of coming back home. And then let's exhale, rotate the upper body to the right, left arm to the outside of the right thigh, right arm is behind you. Inhale, lift and lengthen the spine, drop the shoulders, exhale, twist. And again, inhale, lift and lengthen, exhale, and twist. Keep dropping the shoulders. Let's do that again. Inhale, lift, lengthen, exhale, twist. Maybe that arm sneaks a little closer to the hip. Maybe that right arm goes behind you a little deeper. Maybe, right? And then let's inhale, return to center, and just unwind for a moment. Let the spine unwind. Now I'd like us to go ahead and just extend those legs out, like I said, and, and I don't need you to open to a big straddle, just follow the track that your thighs took. So right hip kind of popping there. I want you to flex your feet. Take your hands to your buttocks, pull the flesh out from beneath you, and pull back a little bit, and let the tailbone draw back. The hands come to the ground, draw the shoulders back, now shake out your feet, flex your feet, draw your toes towards you. And then inhale, point them away. And again, exhale, draw the toes towards you. Inhale, point them away. And last time, exhale, draw the toes towards you. Inhale, point them away. Now exhale, flex. And take a moment here. Inhale, grow tall. So we just did a little twist. Let's exhale, twist, and frame our left leg. I'm starting on the left today just to change things up a little bit. Draw that right hip back and let that right seat root down. Inhale, elongate the spine, and then exhale, fold. And just let your body find whatever homeostasis looks like here. So you draw your shoulders back, you lengthen your spine, keep that right seat rooted. So I'm kind of folding, looking at my toes, kind of going, wow, I really should put some motion on them today. And try not to judge, maybe rub your foot a little bit. Feeling the stretch, so if it needs a little bit of a hamstring stretch, not much else. You might feel a stretch along the right rib cage into the lower back. Now we're trying to square the chest over that left knee. What I'd like you to do here is even try to go a little bit more to the left. Take your left hand to the left, bring your fingertips down, then take your right hand to the outside of that left leg and just kind of twist a little deeper. Maybe rotate that right rib cage a little bit to the left. I'm going to take my right elbow to the outside of my left knee, turn my right palm up and bring my forearm down. And then while I'm there, I'm going to make sure that I check in with my right toes and make sure that the foot is flexed and the toes are pointing up. So I'm just trying to get a little more twist. I'm twisting on the exhalation. So this is not an official yoga pose. It's just something that I'm doing. I'm going to try to keep my right elbow down and bring my hands in prayer. Rotating a little bit more to the left. So it's creating a little bit of tension in my low back. So I'm just going to back off. I tried it. It's a little bit of tension in the back. I'm going to bring my right hand the elbow down, palm up, and my left hand, the fingertips down, elbow out. Now I'm going to slowly inhale, restack the spine, and just find center. And feel the release in the spine. So this big energetic channel, right, the sushuma. Um, and it goes up and down our spine. There's a lot of energy there. That's what you're feeling, right? Just kind of be there. Central channel. And we exhale, rotate to the right. Keep the left seat rooted. Keep the thigh down or the hamstring down, and we're just going to exhale, hinge, and fold over the right leg. Notice that I'm hinging. I'm trying to avoid rounding my spine. I'm trying to send my chest forward and breathe in, and releasing tension. And try not to go into judgment. For me, it's very easy to judge myself, especially you know, my, my own body. For those of you who don't know me, or who do know me but don't know, I lost over about 100 pounds over 15 years ago. And so no matter how much I work out and how much I try, there's just stuff I can't change, like some loose skin that I'm sometimes ashamed of. So for me, just to even have a midriff bearing top on and for you know you guys to see that, it's a lot and I can go into judgment. Um, so it's you know taking some effort for me to be in a space of comfort, try to see the beauty in myself. And folding forward is a space where we have to go inward. And we kind of confront all of that stuff, right? So we 
what I credit with me losing weight was full reflection when I started yoga. I really had to feel what was in the way. And I'm going to try to add a little twist. So I'm going to take that right hand to the mat and then take the left hand and the elbow is just going to go to the outside of the knee. I'm going to bring the forearm down, the palm up. If this becomes too much for you, you're noticing that you're lifting your right buttock up and your back off, your, your left buttock up and your back off a little bit. So I want you to exhale on the twist. Draw the shoulders back, lift the chest and find your breath. Two more breaths like this. Inhale, elongate, exhale to lift. Three. I'm going to try to bring my hands to prayer, keeping the left elbow down. So this does activate, right, that right side of the, the left side of the body. So I'm going to check my foot, check that the twist feels good. It's on the border for me. So that's about it. Bringing that left forearm down, palm up. Then I'm going to inhale, come up that right side, and just come back to center as I exhale. It's not feeling too bad. So now we're going to go ahead and just bend the knees, bring the soles of the feet together. So I'm going to back up a little bit because you know, it's hard to work in, in spaces. It's interesting. I've been reading a lot about this, trying to be perfect and doing my YouTube stuff and realizing, you know, kind of you can't be. You work with what you have. So I don't want you to come into full Baddha Konasana, right? I'm not in full cobbler's pose. My heels are about a foot and a half or so away from my groin. I'm just gonna let the soles of my feet come together. Maybe the big toes touch, right? Maybe the balls of the feet touch, the heels touch. I'm gonna take my hands to my knees. I'm gonna draw my shoulders back. And I'm gonna exhale and just hinge forward and fold. So notice I'm trying to hinge. So I'm gonna let my arms come forward. Maybe I'll move around a little bit and just lengthen. So again, this is one of those poses that, yeah, I can bring my forehead down to my feet. I can do those big poses, right? They're beautiful. They sometimes often feel good. But tonight I don't want to go to ego. I just kind of want to be present in my body as it is right now and with whatever it's feeling. And maybe I hinge a little deeper as I release. And maybe I soften. And the same thing with you. Maybe close your eyes and let your head drop and see where your body goes. If it naturally just unfurls where it's going to rest your forehead to your feet, great. If it doesn't, great. Just be here for a little bit, stretching into the back body. Drawing the tailbone back, releasing tension, releasing the shoulders. Finding breath. Feel the right sits bone root, feel the left sits bone root, feel the outer thighs press down. Feel a little bit of elongation. Maybe the upper body shifts a little forward as the shoulders draw back and you soften a little deeper inward. And then we'll slowly draw the chin toward the chest, tilt the tailbone between the thighs, and inhale, come halfway up. So take like a C-spine. Drop your shoulders, drop the chin. Take an exhalation. Let the body go heavy. Give an inhale, slowly stack the spine up and drop the shoulders. So I'm going to take my hands to the outside of my hips. I want you to keep your right leg as is, just flex the foot. And we're going to turn the left knee in and the left foot out so that the left knee is kind of in a diagonal line to that right heel. Root both sits bones down and take your hands wide and start to twist to your left. I want you to keep your left inner knee down, keep your left arm behind you, so it'll external rotation of the right thigh, internal rotation of the left. Inhale, elongate, exhale, add a little twist. Root both sits bones down, drop your shoulders, lift the chest. Just be present here, try to relax this left leg. Maybe gently press it down. I'm gonna drop my chin here. Feels good, I'm gonna do it. But draw the left shoulder back. Give an inhale, come back to center. And I just want you to twist to the right. Left hand to the outside of the right thigh. Right arm behind you, inhale, lift and lengthen, exhale, twist, root both sits bones down. Good. And inhale, 
I'll return to center. Now let's go ahead and take that left foot out and bring ourselves back to that shape we were in before, that kind of diamond shape. We're going to flex that left foot and now we're just going to turn the right knee to be at a diagonal to the left heel. We're going to flex and we're going to keep the right buttock down. We're going to widen those arms and we're just going to exhale, track along to the right. Inhale, lift and lengthen. Exhale, twist. Do it again. Inhale, lift, lengthen. Exhale, twist. Drop the shoulders. Maybe drop the chin, but draw the shoulders back. Good. And inhale, return to center. And now we're going to exhale, twist to the left. Right arm to the outside of the left thigh. Keep that right buttock down. Inhale, lift and lengthen the spine. Exhale, twist. And then another breath like this. Inhale, lift, lengthen. Exhale, twist. Good. Now inhale, return the spine to center and take an exhalation. So we're going to go ahead and bring the soles of the feet to the mat. Let's go ahead and come onto all fours. So my favorite little thing to do is just come into cat cow. Really basic, but really good for the back, really good for the belly. Draw the shoulders back, spread your fingers out wide, wrists are underneath the shoulders, knees underneath the hips, lengthen your tailbone and tuck your toes. Keep pushing away from gravity and pull your belly button in and up. Now let's exhale, tilt the tailbone between the thighs, draw the mid back up and really round the spine. Feel the stretch, draw the chin towards your chest. Maybe look into the belly if you want to go a little deeper, look into the chest. And then inhale, point the toes, lengthen the tailbone, unfurl the spine, shoulders back, chest forward, cat. Let's do that again. Exhale, tuck your toes, hollow out your belly, round your spine, send that spine out, push down into the mat with your hands and the balls of the feet. Then inhale, point the toes, lengthen the tailbone, unfurl your spine, shoulders back, chest forward, cow. And one more time, guys. Exhale, tuck your toes, hollow out your belly, round your thoracic spine, hold, drop that chin. And then inhale, point the toes, lengthen the tailbone, unfurl the spine cap. Tricep spiraling, we tuck the toes and let's lift the hips up and draw the heels back into a downward facing dog. Let's go ahead and send the seat back and up and draw the chest toward the thighs, collarbones broaden. Root down into the thumb pointer and pinky fingers, lengthen your spine. Draw your heels back and down as the seat rises up and look back at your heels, hiding the heels behind the feet and just breathe here. Inhale and exhale, lengthen both sides of your waist. Hmm. Feel the stretch, feel space between the vertebrae of the spine, draw the shoulders back, send the chest forward, really connect to your breath. So gentle practice doesn't necessarily mean we don't go into some of these upside down poses, right? Let's move the hips left and right. Kind of, I really think a milestone in yoga is when down dog feels good for the first time and you go, oh, that's why I meditate. Well, that's why they teach this pose. That's why this is a resting pose. I'll never forget that day. I don't know when it was, but I'll never forget the feeling of going, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I love down dog. Now what I'd like you to do from down dog is just go ahead and walk your feet just a little bit forward so your ankles are underneath your hips. And then come up onto your fingertips. If you can't touch the ground, use blocks or you can place your hands on blocks. And use blocks to bring the ground up to you. Now I want you to shift your weight back. Lift your toes up, keep the balls of the feet down. So remember, the toes are here, right? These are the little toes. The balls of the feet are right here. Sometimes I see people lift the balls of the feet up too, right? And that's often a sign of a little bit of um, tension and tightness in the feet. So I want to be able to lift the toes and separate them here. And we're going to walk the hands forward, shoulders back, and shift your weight back. Should feel a little more stretch in the hamstrings and the outer hips. Let your head drop for a moment. Keep those toes lifted. Keep the balls of the feet down, heels down, parallel legs about hip point width. Good. Then we're going to transfer the weight forward just a little bit onto the fingertips, drop the toes, pull the belly, and draw the buttocks back. It's always amazing to me how this stretch is so meaningful. The one we're about to do, you're just going to step your right foot forward a foot or so, maybe even less than that, and step your left foot back an inch or two. Draw the right hip back, left it forward, and exhale, hinge and fold. So it's not a very big distance between the legs, but it's a big stretch in the hamstring. Just kind of hang. Draw the right hip back, 
Soften your chest. If you look at your right big toe, that's your drishti gazing point. Feel the stretch in the hamstring. Breathe. Maybe you challenge your balance and hold on to your right leg if that feels good. Keep lengthening the spine and soften. Imagine your spine is like a waterfall. And breathe here. Connecting to your breath. Relax your jaws. Relax tension from your face. Good. Then we're going to walk the hands forward. We're going to lift the chest halfway up as we inhale. And just step the right foot back. If you want to shift the weight back, lift the toes up. Make sure they line up with one another, the toes. And keep your fingertips on the ground. Draw the chest towards your thighs. Pull your belly in. Just focus on stretching your hamstrings and elongating the spine. Good. Then we inhale, transfer the weight forward onto the fingertips, drop the toes, and let's set that left foot forward, maybe six inches to a foot, right foot back, maybe an inch or so, and then exhale, hinge and fold. So really important with these asymmetrical poses, we have differences in the right and left sides of our body, asymmetries, that's normal. So feel whatever you feel and make the adjustments you need to. Left hip is back, right hip is forward, belly is in, chest softens, maybe try your balance for a little bit, catching your calf or hamstring. Just breathing, feeling the hamstring stretch, lengthen the spine. Spine is like a waterfall. We're trying to relax tension. We're trying to disengage from that tension. Breathe. Just be present in the pose. And you want to try to hold a stretch at least 30 seconds or so. It's amazing how long some stretches can feel. Good, now we're just going to transfer the hands a little bit forward and step that left foot back, line the toes up with one another at hip width, draw the weight back into the heels, lift the toes up, keep the balls of the feet down, fingertips to the mat, and just stretch it out a little bit here, breathe. Good, now from here, I'm going to turn to face the camera a little bit. So I'm going to widen my legs a little wider than hip width, I'm going to turn my heels in and my toes out. And I'm just going to drape opposite hand to opposite elbow. You're going to really feel this in the hamstrings. It's also going to challenge your balance. Draw your tailbone back. Send the chest to the space between your calves there. Breathe. Find your balance. Maybe challenge. Lift your toes up. For me, that's a bit much tonight. I'm just going to drop my feet. Let's focus on the stretch. I'm going to start to sway a little bit to the left and the right. So I'm trying to sway just my upper body, keeping the lower body really relaxed or sorry, engaged as my upper body relaxes. Breathe. When you're ready, come back to center and just pause there. Maybe hands come to the ground. Maybe they go to the shins. Just feel yourself out. Notice what your body can do here. Good. And then we're going to lift our spine halfway up, hands to shins, and we're going to turn to face the short side of the mat once again. Good. Now from here, we're going to go ahead and walk the hands forward and we're going to step the right foot forward and really draw the left leg back. So I want you to bend that right knee, bring the left quadricep down to the mat. So if you're on your knee, I would like you to tuck your toes to protect your knee. If you like me, you can be on the quad, you're going to point your toes. Your right knee is going to be tracking for the moment in line with your right hip. And I want you to take your right hand to the inside of the right foot, draw the right hip back and the left hip forward. The entire pelvis goes forward. Your chest goes forward for a moment and you lift it and draw it back slightly. Once you lift your right toes up and you're gonna open the right knee out as you inhale, press down into the mat, both hands are shoulder width apart, and then exhale, hug the right knee in. Inhale, open, draw the right hip back, exhale, close. Another time like this, inhale, open, exhale, close. Now we're gonna inhale open. Some of us are gonna stay here, drawing the right hip back, lifting the chest, dropping the shoulders. Some of us are gonna come down onto our forearms, elbows. You can always use a block, placing a block underneath your forearms, elbows. So I have you lifting your right toes up, protecting the kneecap as you do so as you open your kneecap out, or your knee out. Breathe. So we're going to start to move a little bit left and right. It's a rocking motion. Try to find the spaces in the hip, in the piriformis, right? The buttock muscles there that are feeling tight. And you're just going to breathe. Slow, deep, steady breaths. So we're going to be here a little bit. I'm going to try to advance us up a little bit. You're going to pay attention to what your body can do. You're only going to go as far as your body can go. 
And so remember, for all of us, it's a little different what's relaxing. So for me, this is very relaxing. If this is causing tension for you, you're going to come back onto the palms of the hands. You're going to lift your spine up a little bit. You're going to back out a little bit. Keep sending the right hip back, left hip forward, but the entire pelvic complex goes forward, right? So what I'd like you to do, if you can, is press into your right hand, turn a little bit to the right, and if you need to, assist your right leg and see if you can take a little bit of a diagonal split here. So it's not going to be a full split just yet. It's going to be a diagonal split. My right leg is opened a little bit to the right. My forearms, elbows are down. I'm drawing my right hip back and my left hip forward. So I'm feeling like I'm energetically dragging this buttock back. I'm going to breathe and maybe you do a little bit of a thinking man's pose. I'm going to flex my foot to go deeper into the hamstring stretch. So this for me is very relaxing. If this is not relaxing for you, bend your knee, go to the previous iteration of the pose. If this is super relaxing for you, maybe move a little bit left and right. Rocking out some of the tension. Now rock a little bit to the right if you're in the side split here, a little bit diagonal split we'll call it, and feel how that outer hip gets a stretch under, and the IT band's going to get a little stretch too. So just lean into it, breathe. Try to relax your face, it does make a difference if you can relax the other muscles around your body. Good, now we'll shift a little bit to the left, we're going to bring the wrist underneath the shoulders, we're going to lift the spine up. Maybe come up onto fingertips. So my low back has um, herniations all four, all five. S1 is torn from a car accident seven years ago now. So I don't have a really big back extension. It's a nice way to kind of work for me. If this doesn't work for you, back off. Come forward a little bit. Good. Now we're going to go ahead, press the palms into the mat. We're going to bring that right leg back in. And then sweep it back for a moment to all fours. Wrist underneath the shoulders, knees underneath the hips. Just move around a little bit, side to side. Mm. Good, now I'm going to move a little bit to the right, just beside the wall here. So what I'd like you to do from here is we're going to go ahead and come up into that shorter dog position. And we're going to step that left foot forward and then take that right leg back. We're going to bend that left knee, shimmy that right leg back. Take your left hand to the inside of the left foot. And again, if you're on your knee, you're going to go ahead and tuck the toes. If you're on the quad, you're going to point the toes. Wrists are underneath the shoulders. Hug that left knee in towards you. Pull your belly in. Breathe. Okay, I hope I'm not showing too much skin here. Draw the shoulders back. Feel a stretch in that right hip flexor, right? That's a, another part of the body that can be a little bit tight. So make sure that we're stretching it out, releasing tension. Now we're going to inhale, open that left knee out a little bit, lifting the left toes up, and then exhale, hug that left knee in. Keep sending your pelvis forward. Inhale, open, lift the chest, drop the shoulders, exhale, close. And one more time, inhale, open, exhale, close. Now we're going to inhale, open, drop that left knee. And for those of us who can, we come down onto our forearms, elbows, maybe you use the block beneath your hands. I want you to keep your left toes lifted, okay, so you protect your knee. Breathe. Lengthen your spine. Try not to hold your breath. Draw the shoulders back. Keep sending that left buttock back, right, like you're dragging the left buttock back. Move around a little bit left and right. You'll notice that as you go left, you get a little more stretch in that, um, oh my gosh, piriformis. I keep forgetting the name of that muscle here. Pull your belly in, draw the shoulders back. And remember, if this is too much, you back off. You come up onto the hands, right? You lift the spine up. You hug that left knee in. You don't have to suffer. You should feel a dull, deep ache, but something that's manageable. Something that you can kind of sit in for a little bit. Just find your breath. Good, now we're gonna go ahead and try to deepen. You're gonna place your left hand down, kind of twist a little bit to the left. Straighten that left leg out a little bit to the left, just outside of your left hip. Draw that left buttock back, feel a dragging action there. Elbows underneath the shoulders, lengthen the spine and breathe. Flex your left foot, connect to your breath, and maybe rock a little bit left and right. Remember, if this is too much, you back off a little bit. Over time, the practice grows. 
So, I mean, when I first started practicing, I practiced hours on end and really worked my body. And that was for years. And then I got injured and I had to back off and my practice changed a lot, you know, a lot less vinyasa, even a lot less practice. Um, so what's been nice is being able to practice lately, which is something that I missed. And my practice looks very different. But again, it was years of work and, and refining and getting to know my body. So please don't push, just be with your body. Now, those of you who are comfortable, lean a little bit to the left. Get that IT band stretch, deeper piriformis stretch. Feel that right hip flexor. I'm really feeling my right hip flexor. If anything else, it's really talking to me tonight. Relax your jaws and find your breath. Blow your belly in. Good, now we're just gonna slowly bring the hands to the ground. Lift the chest, maybe come up on the fingertips. And again, I don't have the biggest spinal extension for a yoga person, but it is what it is, and I'm grateful that I can extend. Feel the stretch, breathe. And then we're just gonna slowly deconstruct, bringing that left knee back in. Let's come up to all fours again. Just kind of move about a little bit, hips left and right. Mm. So come back to center, cross the ankles behind us, roll over the crossed ankles. And we're going to scooch forward on the mat, it's kind of winding down. We're going to go ahead and lie down on our backs. Press your hands on your belly for a moment. Walk your heels in a little closer towards you. And I want you to collapse your left leg out to the left. So my left knee is dropped out to the left. So I'll lift my right leg up so you can see, okay? And I'm just gonna stay here for a moment. Relax the shoulders, hands to the belly. Nod your head now a few times. Keep the right buttock anchored. So I like to inhale as my head goes to center. Exhale as I twist it. And I'll bring the head to center, bring that left knee back to center, and then we'll just let the right leg drop out, flexing the foot, and just be here. Let that release happen. Now start with turning the head to the left, and then to the right. Just releasing tension. Just feel your belly rise and fall. Start to let the body start to calm down. Bring the white sole of the foot to the mat. I'm very particular about this pose. We'd be very mindful. I'd like you to inhale, extend your left leg up, flex the left foot, cross the left leg over the right leg, and imagine you're sitting in a chair and just kind of crossing here. Now you can squeeze your outer calves together. Those of you who can, wrap the left foot around the right calf. Make sure your left foot's on top. I'm gonna open my arms out to T. So my left arm actually can't go to T, so I'm just gonna do um, saguaro cactus arms. I'm going to exhale, release both of my knees to the left as I turn my head to the right. So notice that my right shoulder is down. I'm lengthening my tailbone. I'm squeezing my inner thighs and outer calves together. And I'm keeping the upper body down to protect the lower body. You should feel a stretch in that right hip. To deepen that, let the right hip go a little bit more to the left and squeeze a little tighter along your inner thighs. Relax your shoulders and find your breath. Nice twist, squeezing those inner thighs, kind of bringing back into center. Then we're gonna inhale, bring the nose and knees to center. Next in breath, extend the left leg up and exhale, bring the left foot down. Readjust as you need to. Move your hips around, inhale, bring your right leg up. Exhale, cross the right thigh or hamstring over the left thigh. Either squeeze the other calves together or wrap the right foot around the left calf. Keep your left shoulder down with your right leg on top. Exhale, releasing the knees to the right and the head to the left. Squeezing the inner thighs and outer calves, keeping the right, the left shoulder down. Find your breath. To get a little deeper, take that left hip a little more to the right. You feel a little more stretch in that hip and a little more release. Breathe.
soften, squeeze the outer hips, or stretch the outer hips. Inhale, nose and knees to center. Next in breath, right leg up, and exhale, bring that right leg down. Take a moment here, bring the soles of the feet together, knees apart, release your hands down onto your hip points belly. Close your eyes, relax the shoulders, and find your breath. Let those inner thighs drop. Let the tailbone lengthen. Relax tension from the shoulders and hands. Feel the skull bone touch down the ground. Relax the face. Relax the shoulders, the chest, the ribs. Relax your buttocks, your inner thighs, your feet. Feel the belly rise and fall. Let your mind stay focused on your breath. Gently breathing in through your nose and out through your nose. Straighten your legs out as you exhale toward the corners of the mat. Let your feet flop out. Let your arms release on either side of your body. Palms up. Arms about 45 degrees away from the hips so your shoulders can lie flush. And breathe. Shavasana. Gently begin to wiggle your toes and your fingers. Slowly rotate your ankles and wrists in both directions. And slowly bring the soles of the feet to the mat. And instead of drawing the knees into the chest, let's roll onto the right side of the body and pause for a moment in a fetal position. And feel fetal position. Then we'll slowly inhale, come on up into a cross-legged seat. Take a moment here to relax, resting your hands on your lap and feeling whatever your body is feeling. My back is still feeling a little tight. I'm acknowledging that. But the rest of me feels calm. My nervous system feels calm. And I hope that's how you're feeling tonight. Let's bring the palms together in prayer and bow the chin towards the chest and take a moment to practice gratitude. So in this time of uncertainty, it's always important to still hold on to being grateful. So take a moment in your mind, grateful for someone and something tonight. Om Shanti, Om peace to each and every one of you. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Namaste.